In a previous video, I walked you through the code necessary to create a page that first pulls uh, Facebook's Graph API for search results related to the search term zombies. And uh, we did that with the getJSON method. And then after it received those results, we iterated through each one of them with the each function and templated the data that we received because all we received was some string values and we put each one of those into um, a div container that was called class and then we added some HTML to it so we could style it with some CSS and the result is what we have on the page here. While this implementation is cool, I kind of wanted to take it one step further and what I wanted to do is add a search box at the top of it so that the user could search for whatever results they wanted and essentially this page does exactly the same thing that our original page does except with the added functionality of the search menu so what I've done is I've outlined the steps necessary to do that and I'm gonna walk us through them now first order of business is to actually set up a search box and button for the user and that's going to be nothing more than some plain HTML. We'll do input and then type equals input. And that's going to be our actual search box. And then we're going to need a button. That's going to be our search button. And we need to define a type for that too. And we'll, we'll do that as just button. And we'll give it a label of search. And then we'll terminate it. And what we have there is a search box and button but still our code executes on the page which actually brings us to our second step is that we need to stop that code from automatically executing and in order to do that we're gonna actually convert this code that we have here that does the search we're gonna change that into a function because we are going to need that functionality later we just don't need it every time the page loads up so we do that by doing the function and we're going to give it a name let's name it search FB and then I'll put the parentheses and the brackets and then I need to terminate it down here and there we go and what I'm gonna do is actually put a little code uh, code comment at, right at the end of that so I know it ends the search function so that way it kinda it's easier for me to work with down the road. Okay, uh, let's take a look at what we have now. Okay, still the same thing. Now we just have a box and a button, but nothing happens when the page loads. That's a good thing. Let's actually have that event trigger when the button is clicked. So the first thing we're going to need to do is have a way for jQuery to target that button specifically. And what I'm going to do in order to do that is add an ID to the button. Add ID for the button, something semantic, let's name it start search. And at least now I have a way to target that element with, uh, um, with jQuery. So uh, the other thing that I'll need to know is the click event or the, the click function that jQuery has. The click function allows you to basically you bind the click function to an element jQuery listens for listens to that element to see if the click goes down and if it's clicked on well then it's going to execute something inside of that and if you kind of scroll down the uh, API page for click you could just copy and paste the example that it gives you actually I'm just going to copy the first line and I'll bring it right at the end uh, where I after I finish my uh, search FB function decoration I'll just pop that guy right in there and let me terminate it before I do anything else okay and now let me just tweak this for exactly what I want now I don't have an element called target my element is called start search so I'll start by putting start search in there and then what do I want to have happen inside over here well, I created this nice search FB function that I could just put right in there and terminate it. And now what should happen is that when I click the search button, 
the the results should come up. Okay, pretty cool. Now, while this works, the, the problem is is that I could put whatever I want in here. Let's put my name, Dragos, and it really doesn't, it's not going to do anything. Uh, it's just, it's always doing the search for zombies no matter what I do. So let's do something to actually allow us to get that event to, uh, rather, get that value to be passed to our string. So first order of business is we're going to need to kind of modify our function over here. Now you know that functions can accept parameters that we put in here and that parameter could be passed to whatever's inside over here and that's exactly what we want to do. We want to actually have a search query. Let's name it that. And what we could do is we want this search query, whatever the user defines this search query to be, we want it to replace zombies or zombie in our search string. So I could just, I'll just delete the zombie and I want to leave it formatted otherwise exactly the same, just right up to the part where it says Q equals. And then I'll add a plus and I'll add this search query. Okay, so far, so good. We've modified our function to actually receive a parameter. Now, we want to actually see what parameter are we going to give it, because it's going to be search FB, and now we could give it whatever parameter we want. So for example, if I put in double quotes, Dragos, our page should, shouldn't be searching for zombies anymore, it should be searching for my name as soon as we click this. And let's make sure that's actually happening. Nice, that is happening. So anything I put in there, uh, now if we put zombies back in, and I refresh the page, when I click it, it's going to, again, pull up the zombies info. Nice. But that's not exactly what we want, right? We want to make sure that it's passing the parameter from whatever that value is in this search box. So how are we going to do this? Well, if you remember, when you create a variable, the variable could be a function in itself. And what, I, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a variable that essentially pulls the value from whatever is in that search box. And there's a uh, jQuery does that because jQuery has a jQuery val function which will pull the value from anything you ask it to pull from. So with that said, here's, here's what it's going to take to pull it. I'm going to do variable or var and let's name it search this. And search this is going to equal, well, I need to get the value from this input over here. So what I did in order to, to have jQuery target the button is I gave an ID. So I'll give the input an ID of, and I'll name it user query. And then I could go back here to my variable search this and what we'll do is we'll make it look for the value inside a user query dot val. It's going to be that easy. And now instead of me putting hard coding something into this uh, search FB function, I'll just pass it to search this variable. And let's see what happens now. Um, when I refresh this, we'll do something we haven't done yet. HTML5, and we'll click search. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Still keeping them crossed. All right, maybe there's something funky in our code. So I know that I have start search, click, so it's listening to that, and that's good. We have a variable called search this. Ah, I didn't put the hash in front of the target. You see, so that's what was getting me because it wasn't actually picking up the value from over there. So now, let's give it another go. Or or did it get it? Maybe it didn't. Well, this, this could, yeah, I, I think this could potentially be doing it. Well, you know what the problem, yes, it is. Uh, now we could verify. Look, HTML5, but then once I put zombies in, it added even more stuff. You know what's going on here is that every time that search function happens, it just keeps on adding more and more results to my page. Check out my sidebar over here. See how big it is? 
If I put in now CSS3, just keep an eye over here. That should get smaller once I click it. Ah, you see? Because now I have my initial HTML5, then my zombies results, and then some CSS3 results over there. So, you know, what's going to need to happen in that function that I created, that FB search function, is that probably the one thing it ought to do right at the very beginning after it does that, it needs to remove the results from the previous search. So, let's do just that, and I'll do at dot, and I know that it's creating this results class, so I'll just name dot results, and let me give it a single quote in there. Uh, hang on a second, bear with me, there we go, dot results, um, and then we'll go, yeah, remove. So at least this way it'll remove them from there every time. And let's see, CSS3, when I click search, all right, it has that, but now let me do HTML5 and it's search. Okay, and now let's do zombies. And uh, obviously I messed something up over there. Um, maybe what I, ah, I put that inside the each statement, so it's removing each one. So let me do it right before the each statement. It, you, you see what I did wrong? By me putting it inside of the each statement, it iterated through each one. So this is more, more than likely the, the last result on the page. So let's try again. Zombies. Yeah, there we go. And one more time, let's do HTML5. Nice.